DF and Nasty show. We're back here. We came back for the Keeneland sale. Thank you, Bob Baffert, by the way, because we got uh, we did pretty well today, didn't we, Nate? He told us to come back on uh, week two and see what we, where our money would be better spent on week two. So we we started with a two hundred thousand dollar budget. And tell them how we worked, how it worked out today, Dio. Uh, well, I got nine horses right now at uh, one hundred ninety one thousand. So. Uh, I got one at 5000 from Unbridled got, Song. Are you kidding me? Yeah, and we got enough money to get something to eat tonight. So Yeah, we got a couple grand to go have dinner. Can here at the uh, uh, Keeneland facilities. This is the track uh, open in three weeks, but this is uh, prep work a little bit. But as you can tell, if you haven't been here... Nasty show. We're back here with Mike Battaglia on the roof of Keeneland. Mike, how are you doing today? Uh, so far, I'm losing a little bit, but that's going to change. That's going to change. Yeah. <laughs> I have, I have, I have a belief that you're going to change gonna that change. around. Got a couple questions for you. Um, give us a the Breeders' Cups next week. Huge event, biggest in horse racing. Give us a little. What's the one horse you're looking at right now? Well, you know, a couple of favorites kind of stick out, but uh, there's one horse that's going to be a price spring in the air. I okay. saw her run here, Mark Cassie's filly, and then she's going in the juvenile fillies. I really like the way she won the Alcibiades here, so I'm going to take a shot with her. There's three undefeated fillies in there, but they've all got speed, and she likes to come from off the pace. So I'm, I'm going to try her. She's going to be about 12 or 15 to 1. So spring in the air is one that I'm looking for a price. I'm definitely going to be betting on that one. Yeah. Yes. Hey, give me a, another angle. What is the favorite, your best race you've ever seen in your life? Your history. My, my favorite race? Yeah, that you've would, ever seen. Would be affirmed in Aladar's Derby, because that was the first race I ever called, the first Derby I ever called. Yeah. I called that Derby. <laughs> Unbelievable so, race. Was, something about that. Yeah, we I, actually I, yeah, asked, yeah. Their, we asked that to each other. We, that, that was one of the ones we came up with. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's, uh, that was unbelievable, you know, to be a young announcer and calling affirmed in Aladar and it turned out to be such a rivalry and everything so that's a race that uh, I'll just never that's forget. That's one put it right there. I, I, it's burned. I, yeah, I it's will burned never forget in there. I've got a big poster of cool. affirmed winning the race and Steve Cawthon, you know, he was a rookie then too. Yeah. He signed it. Mike, we both broke our maidens on this one. Awesome. Nice. <laughs> that is awesome. Nice. Awesome. I'd love yeah. to have something like that. Yeah. And then uh, what's your favorite wager if you were looking to bet typically at, at, here at Keeneland? Yeah, you know, it depends on the race. You know, some if, if a horse is a good price that I like, I might bet to win. I, I'd i say if I had to pick a favorite wager for me, it'd be an exacto. Exacto. Yeah, I mean, okay. I, I, I love the pick six, which yes. we don't have anymore. So the pick five I'll play. But, you know, I, I love to play the pick six because I made some money doing it. But I'd say, if, you know, if I have one wager that I like, oh, it's, it's an exacto. Which is steadily every race. Yes. Uh -huh. One more question. Red's out, your Giants or uh -huh. Detroit? Who you got? My Reds ought to be in there. They, they should. They blew they it. Should. Believe that. They blew it. Well, you know, the Giants won last night. Uh, they've got the home field advantage because the National League won the All-Star game. I think they're a team of destiny. They've already overcome uh, six must-win games, and they've won them yes. all. So I'm going Giants. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. One more thing. You get done with your day here at Keeneland. You know, you get home. What do you do when you, when you, you get out of here? Look at the D. Huff and Nasty Show. What else? <laughs> awesome. Thank you, sir. Appreciate your time. <laughs> Thank you. We have the Nasty Show. We're coming to you from the uh, paddock here at Keeneland uh, with my friend Jonathan Shepard. We just watched the uh, seventh race. Just won on a, a two-year-old, a Lionheart, Colt uh, Bogart, which, which seemed to run in pretty good hand there. No, he did very nicely. We're very happy. He's always shown a bit of promise. We ran him in Saratoga once, so he did have a race coming into this. He was probably not quite as straight as he could have been for that race, but we kind of wanted to get a run into him because that's where he was training. And uh, backed off him a bit, sort of regrouped, and uh, he put it together. Hey. And I, saw, I heard, it, heard Jillian say he kind of just pulled him out there in the clear, gave him a little rain, showed him, and he 
He responded nicely. Julian said he's a nice old I think he did, and he seemed to draw off pretty effortless. He really didn't ask him for a whole lot. And uh, of course, Julian is riding with great confidence at the moment. That makes a difference too. He's got the, the jockey's title yes. locked up. So, um, so uh, you uh, you're going to be down in uh, the Florida this this, this year, or after, yeah. after the Cleveland meet? Where's the what's the next? Yeah, I always take a group to Florida in the winter, and I'm um, sure that's where we'll go with him. You run at New York if on the feature races when you find spots on the car. Uh, off and on, yes. I mean, Saratoga, we always take stalls, so I run quite a bit there. Yeah. Otherwise. Uh, in the New York circuit, only just in the special occasion, comes sure. up not very often, to be honest. Okay, so uh, let me ask you a question. When you're done with this Keeneland meet or when you're done with your day, <laughs> uh, what do you do, my friend? I'm going to go home and watch the D. Huff and Nasty Show. Of course you are. <laughs> Thanks for your time. You're welcome. D. Huff and Nasty Show. Here come the jockeys for the seventh race to Elm Tree. Show. We're right outside the paddock here, and on the way to the winner's circle, we're here with uh, Tom, aka Gorilla. He's the head of the uh, out walk out here for the uh, Keeneland races. We just got done with the fourth race. Uh, Gentleman's Note was the winner of that Gentleman's one. Code. Gentleman's Note. So, Tom, how's it going today? Any, any any wild and crazy kids out here today? No, I tell you what. Uh, usually on Wednesdays and Thursdays, it's very mild. Fridays and Saturdays, it gets a little crazy. And Sunday is somewhat crazy. A little, but a little more drinking on the weekends, I take it? I think so. I think so, yeah. But no problem so far. This meet's been pretty smooth sailing, right? It has. We, we've had a couple of things with uh, some jockeys uh, going down, but they they, they were fine. Yeah, and we, was, we were here last the other day when that happened. It was, it's always had to see that when it goes down. But They're, they're back running again. Yeah, they said they're a little seeing. sore, but they, they, they didn't keep them out of racing maybe one day. And that's what happens when you get a little older. You get a little sore sometimes. So. That's right. That's right. Um, so, you know, you got this you got this uh, fall meet wrapping up here, and then when you get done with your days and uh, you're, you're uh, checking things out, uh, what do you do, my friend? I, I'm, I'm going to the D. Huff and Nasty Show. Who doesn't? That's the way to go. Well, everybody Sure. Tom, we'll see you soon, buddy. Thanks a lot. You got it. Here they come with the Jesmond Stakes. The feature here, turf race. There they go, and they're coming back to race. Super high five. T. Huff and Nasty Show. We're here with the legendary Tom Hammond. Tom Hammond, how are you doing today? Legendary, huh? That yeah. must be, uh, means I've been around for a long time, is what that means. <laughs> yeah, but you still have plenty to go, I'm sure. Well, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> how are you doing today? I'm doing fine. How can you, uh, how can you not have a fine day when you're at Keeneland and uh, we just hit a, a nice nice return on a on a wager so nice. life's good you, you and you and that guy back there Mr. Tag yeah. Mr. Tag my, uh, my, uh, <laughs> my turf analyst yeah <laughs> well, Tom Hammond look, give a little scenario on his background SEC basketball from 1980 to 2010 NBC's main thoroughbred coverage host Notre Dame football for any of y'all who watch Notre Dame you know this guy summer track summer Olympics track and field and the uh, wild card Saturday on NBC with Chris Collinsworth, correct? Uh, not anymore, since he's now doing the uh, Sunday night game. He's he's Sunday main night. He's with Sunday Mike, night football, with yeah. Mike Mayock. So. Yeah. yeah, and he's also got two Eclipse Awards in 84 and 86. Congratulations on those. Thank you, thank you. we got a couple questions for you. All right, shoot. First question. Madden NFL Live 09 are covering a live Notre Dame football game. Which one? <laughs> which one? Which it's, one? Uh, it's no contest. Uh, <laughs> Notre Dame is the best. Doing a game at Notre Dame uh, with all the pageantry and all the tradition, and you can just feel the presence of New Rockney and everybody there. It's the best. This Madden game was fun to do, but it was a lot of work, a lot of recording everything that can happen in a football game, and over and over take and over take. and over. So it was uh, it was tedious work. Glad Every to do running it, but back, it was tedious off tackle, work. Off Correct. Off chomp. Yeah. Wow. Correct. That's a long, long. So yeah, doing a Notre Dame game is is the best. Awesome. Going on to the best. What's the greatest sporting event you've ever seen live in, in person? Well, you know, I've done 10 Olympics now, uh, summer and winter. And uh, you could go back and just take every Olympics and name five great moments that, that happened there. I mean, it's just uh, it's the pinnacle of the sporting world, really, and to, uh, and to just think about all the great moments you've been witness to at, at 10 Olympics. But uh, it would have to be Usain Bolt. Usain Bolt, the Jamaican sprinter, I've seen him set uh, four world records at uh, the Olympics, and uh, guess, yeah. he's like, "Yep, that's it." And he's, uh, you know, he's like Muhammad Ali. He's just a charismatic figure. I think the most popular athlete in all the world now. We don't think yeah. of that so much with track and field, but it's so popular in other parts of the world. And uh, he's just a dynamic performer. And to have seen him uh, set four world records at the Olympics is pretty special. That'd be amazing. Yeah. I just seeing it on TV was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. The Breeders' Cup's coming up next week. Do you have a pick for us? Well, um, 
you know, there's so many races now, 15 races, and we, we did the Breeders' Cup for the first 22 years, and then we were gone while ESPN took it, and now we're back in it. And uh, to me, uh, Royal Delta would be the best bet of the day in the Ladies' okay. Classic. That would okay. be the last race on Friday. Awesome. And uh, that's that's uh, my best bet of the day for the for both days of the Breeders' Cup. That's one pick for you all to bet. And, you know, Tom, you get done with the day here at Keeneland or maybe after the Olympics are over at night. What do you do, sir? Well, after Mike Battaglia has broken me at Keeneland, <laughs> and, you know, I would go home busted, nothing to do, but, you know, try to scrimp around and see if I can find some food. And I really check out the D. Huff and Nasty Show is actually awesome. what I do. Thank you very much. <laughs> You're welcome. Here's the Nasty Show. Here comes Julian Leperu and his winner into the winner's circle. The Keelan Paddock, beautiful Keelan Paddock, standing here with the uh, leading jockey of this meet, uh, Jillian Met Peru. How you doing today, buddy? Very good. So good. far, so good, yeah. So far, so good. He just won the sixth race on, uh, it's uh, Captain Futuro. Uh, came from off the pace a little bit in a mile and a half turf race. So it looked like he was sitting in there perfect. Saw you in the back coming around the first time. Fifth place at the top of the stretch, somewhere in that neighborhood on the rail there. Yeah, well, you know, he's a, he's a one that came from uh, from Europe, so usually they don't break very good in there. So uh, we were basically uh, last, or very close to be last anyway. And uh, I could sneak in, uh, in the rail, you know, on the backside and uh, pick up ground and uh, get him out in the straight. Like you say, I was like six or six uh, coming to the quarter four, and he, he finished up. Strong after that. Yeah. So you go get him outside once you get outside, you switch, boom, off he went, right? Yeah, yeah, you know, he's a, he's a nice horse, he wanted good, so. Yeah, so we got six days left, I think, in the meet, uh, and you uh, you got a little lead in the uh, jockey standing, so uh, we're going to hopefully uh, be influential when you uh, win in the, the fall meet here. So are you going to ride at Churchill or are you going to do back and forth this year? No, I'm actually uh, changing, you know, uh, because of my personal life, I'm going to be uh, leaving Kentucky and going to. California, so I'll be, I'll be riding uh, You're getting married, day. aren't you? Yes. Ah, oh, there you go. Uh, so congratulations on that, too. Yeah, no, thank you. Yeah, so you I, I, I will ride opening day at Churchill and then go to okay. California for Breeders' Cup and, uh, and stay there after that. All right. Well, nothing but west, best wishes for you. When you're finished with your day, my friend, uh, tell me what you do when you uh, unwind at the end of the day. Uh, I'll be watching the DR and Nasty Show. There you go. Nice okay. to meet you, buddy. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thanks We're out here in the, in the uh, paddock pre-race. We're putting a little tack up on here, the five horse. This five horse is a grand arch by arch. It's going to be a interesting horse. He's a big old colt, big old guy. Let's see what he's going to do in this race. It's a big allowance race. Um, we got a lot of work done today. It's beautiful out here today. We're going to be out here tomorrow. What else are we going to do? Do you have? We got Paula Duca tomorrow, don't we? Yeah, Paula Duca. Yeah, I like it. Baseball great. Baseball stuff. Four time All Star. We're going to bring as much to you as we can bring. No, I really shouldn't. Thank you. Fourth race. Winner, Gentleman's Code. Go by Julio Garcia. We want all these guys in our picture. Not great. Come on in. Come on in. Really? Come on in. We're in the paddock with the Green Haven's reward. Tom Amos is tacking up the horse as we speak. Uh, we'll be chatting with him here shortly. D. Huff and Nasty Show coming to you from the Keeneland Paddock. We're going at, uh, for the fourth race here. This is the, uh, the Jewel Cup. It's a seven furlong race for Colts, two-year-old Colts. Uh, we've got uh, Tom Amos here with us. He's going he's gonna to, he saddles uh, Green Haven's Rewards. Is a, is a Colt from Rocky in the Paddock. He looks a little, a little bit feisty. He's a, he's a beginner. He's a first-time starter. Yeah. There are a few of them in here like that. They're, this is all new to them. So, uh, so they're a little pumped up about it. So that being said, they're actually pretty calm. On the yeah, absolutely, so. absolutely. Think about it like uh, getting ready for a football game. You know, there they're getting ready to go to the field, and they're yeah. they're excited to be on on the playing field. Speaking of football, who's your team? The LSU, all LSU, the way. About, I'm an LSU pro. graduate. What about pro football? Your Tigers. Pro football, are... Saints. My nice. brother, my oh, brother's uh, a team doctor for the Saints. Buy you all the way. I love yeah, it. Yeah, Drew Brees. Uh, so anyway, uh, for you and James here, you just won the last race. You got a little bit of a hot hand. Uh, he what's, does. What's the ideal trip, you think, for this? Well, I think I think position wise, you know, somewhere within the first five or six lengths early, and hopefully a good finish this race has a little length to it, so I think the, the winner is the one that shows some stamina. So, okay, good call, good call. So we won't waste too much of your time. You know, I got to go over here to the uh, yeah. give James. Speaking of stamina, stamina, I like to watch D. I like to watch the the D Huff and Nasty Show. Yeah, buddy, that's, that's one of my is. favorite. That's yeah, one of my so, favorites. We'll so, be uh, out of Churchill this this fall meet. You got some stuff going on there. I'm sure you're always a, you're a celebrity. Fan.
face in the uh, <laughs> Churchill scene. So, so are you guys. Yeah, it's an honor. All right, man. Right. You have a nasty show. That entrance right there is coming into the paddock at Keeneland. And we got the feature coming. And the next step you have is up to this guy right here. Make sure you don't have any, anything of heat eating or breathing. And that's one ready to go right there. Pre-race for the uh, Jessamine Grade 3. It's a $150,000 race. I'm here with Dale Romans. Having a good year so far this year, aren't you, buddy? Been a great year. Best Looking year good, yet. too. Thank you. Been on the P90X? Is that what I'm hearing? I've uh, been under the Patino plan. Oh, yeah, the Patino he's working plan? the weight off of me. <laughs> Looking good, buddy. Looking good. Uh, we were just checking out this uh, this race here today. And uh, uh, if you had the ideal trip for uh, for you and Victor, what would, what would you like it? Where would you like him to be? I would see, say be laying fairly close, just like third or fourth, turning for home and try to pounce on him. Yeah, that's what we're saying. We're doing. And uh, this is the first time I'm on the poly track, or you've been on there before? No, this is a turf. Okay, so turf. first time on the turf. So, yeah. yeah, so a mile on the 16th, is that the distance you're looking for? Right? Yeah, she ran well going 7 eighths last time on the grass, so. and, uh, and she seems like she wants to stretch out. Okay, any thoughts on dual hand while we're, while we're chitting? We're going to California on Monday. Gotcha. We're going to work on the turf and dirt both, and we're going to make the call after See that. See what happens there. Yeah, so. game time decision. Hey, there you go. That's, a, that's all you can do with these big yeah. animals, right? Exactly. So, so uh, I was just one last question for you right after this race today when you get home, and what are you going to do, my friend? I'm going to be watching the D. Huff and Nasty Show. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Dan. Right. Thank Good you. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Show here at the Winter Circle. We just watched the Jessamine, the $150,000 Grade Three Stakes. I'm here with the winning jockey, Corey Lannery. Nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you. Real nice ride there. I saw you were in kind of close, tight. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, they kind of got you. They kind of collared you, right? They did. Yeah, they passed me. About, about the 316th pole, I guess they passed me and got a, a good head in front of me. You know, and my filly jumped to the left lead, I believe. And, uh, I saw it. I saw a switch there, and they kind of snuck in there. Right. And at that point, I really thought they had her. The know, only bit. Um, yeah, that's what I thought too. I, unfortunately, I had everybody else but your horse in the pick, take three in the pick. So, so uh, but anyway, so well, do me a favor and don't bet on me. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, do you gonna do you think they're gonna take you out to California or hope to take? I, I hope so. You yeah. know, I rode her last two times and learned learned the Philly. Um, yeah, we just talked to Dale earlier in the paddock and he was saying about uh, just sitting off the pace a little bit. Uh, if he gets the gets real just off the pace, should be able to scoot past. And sure enough. Right, 37 to one shot. That's, uh, that's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, it's a good thing. So we'll, we'll see what happens. Well, uh, hopefully, you're going to be riding uh, Churchill again this uh, yeah, this right, fall. Yeah, Churchill meet? for the fall. Okay. And, uh, we'll, we'll be out there. We'll be out there checking you out. So hopefully, we'll give you some uh, give you some racing luck. So when you're finished with all this, I know it's a good day for you when you win a hundred fifty thousand dollar race. Uh, what are you going to do, my friend? I'm going home, chill out, relax, and watch the D-Huff and Nasty Show. Of course, that's the only thing to do. That's Pleasure, right, Corey. Thanks, buddy. Congratulations. This is full ride. Carl Nasker is uh, up and getting mount, getting the straps on the tack, and he is not one. Keeneland <laughs> Paddock after race seven. I'm here with up and coming jockey Rosalind Probnik. Almost got there in that one, didn't you? Just about. Yeah, but almost doesn't count. Almost doesn't count. But I saw you got her outside, or got him outside, and then left. I was cheering for you because I had that horse singled it up in my big five sequence. So. But, Sorry uh, about that. No, that's okay. Hey, I've been, that's all I do around here anymore is lose. But at least we get to meet some cool people. So, uh, are you going to be right after Keeneland here? Where, what's next for you? Uh, I'll be riding opening day at Churchill, and then uh, Breeders' Cup next weekend, mm -hmm. and I'm um, on vacation actually. A nice little break. So, what do you do when you're on vacation? You got to. Uh, um, Where are you from exactly? I'm from New Jersey. Okay. Originally, grew up there. Um, and actually, on vacation, I'm headed to South Africa. Nice, nice, very cool. Where was your Where's your first mount at? Uh, Pimlico Race Course. Pimlico, in Maryland. Maryland. I got you. So, all right, Rosie. Well, we, uh, it was a pleasure to meet you. And uh, when you're done out here with all this racing, competing with these boys, what do you do for your for your free time? Uh, I'm gonna go home and watch the Do Have a Nasty Show. Why not? It's the best thing to do. Nice to meet you. All right. Sorry about that. Though. Thanks. Take care. Mistakes, final stretch. Wow, what a finish we had there! Photo finish. DF and Nasty Show coming to you out here from uh, Glorious Keeneland. We're up in the media room. I'm here with my friend Paul Duca. Nice to meet you, buddy. Nice to meet you, too. Uh, this guy right here, 286 lifetime average, 80 home runs, 480 RBIs, 481 RBIs, and <laughs> One of the most uh, impressive is from 03-06, this guy was in the All-Star game, which congratulations on all those, all those stats. Thank you very much. So, um, let's talk about Keelan first. Uh, later on today, they got to pick four, pick five. 
the other horse that stands out in that race sequence that you uh, yeah, used? Yeah, I like Queen's Award a little bit in that race. Um, I think it's race number eight. It's always from Marcelino Pajose and uh, Eduardo mm -hmm. Caramori. Um, facing some tougher horses, but I think just the way she, he ran over the poly track here, he freaked last time. I think he runs back to that effort. He's going to be tough to beat again. Yeah, I like the horse, too. He's going to win, too. So. Um, and, uh, and how about the, the Breeders' Cup coming up next Friday and Saturday? Mm -hmm. Do you have anybody that stands out for you in that Breeders' Cup sequence either way? Well, I think finally, maybe for America, we're going to get a Breeders' Cup Turf Champion again. Last time, I think it was Joe yeah. Har, and he did yeah, hit him with a while ago. <laughs> um, like But far. I think point of entry. Yeah. Um, is the real deal. Um, I know he has some issues, they say, that aren't shipping. Hopefully he'll ship okay, but nice I horse. really think Shug has done a, uh, a good job with him. I think he's worse to be. That's right, Shug McGee, he up has got it going. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, that's, 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 uh, I like that one as well for you. So, um, And then, uh, how did you... I know you were a baseball player for many years before you were all-star. How did this horse racing thing come about? Well, I used to shuck stalls at Turf Fairs when I was a kid. Wow. I grew up around the track. Arizona, right? Yeah. That's Arizona track. Nice. My dad owned horses, uh, so I just grew up in the business and I loved it. Owned horses when I played as well. So um, we had the opportunity to work for TVG and just love every bit of it and get to come out here to Keeneland every yeah. day. So how can you be uh, not upset? Nick Hines and Matty are friends of ours. So they're, they're yeah. good guys. We all have to get together sometime and go out. You guys so. got to get better friends. You know that. <laughs> yeah, I know. Believe me, I know. So, uh, well, we thank you for doing this, and uh, we, this is the last day we'll be out of Keeneland. We'll be out of Churchill. Are you going to be out of Kurt Churchill at all? Or? <clears throat> no, I go home um, here on Monday and then get ready to go to the Breeders' Cup for a couple days and then uh, take some time off a little bit maybe and then get ready for the uh, Santa Anita meet, which is going to be after uh, December, and TUG will be covering that. So pumped to be out yeah, of Santa Anita awesome. every day, that's too. Awesome. Well, that's so. a good crew they got at TUG right yeah. now. So when you get off time, fishing, golfing, anything? No, I watch the D-Huff and Nasty show. <laughs> there you go. you got to do it. Man. Nice to meet you, Thanks, Paul. Thanks a lot.